Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat, and uh, today I wanted to look at a version 23 file. Uh, there's a thread with uh, a customer asking some questions about how to machine these uh, coned pockets. So uh, I loaded it up in my version 23. I kind of had to f f blow the dust off of it. To be honest, I hadn't had it open in years. But um, all right, so we got the model open. Let's just jump right into it. Some of the things that I typically do is rearrange my screen a little bit. Uh, there's some uh, menus that I prefer to have in specific locations. Okay, so we have our part. Now, one of the things that is quite a bit different from the... Uh, quite a bit different in the older software is there is no uh, stock wizard. So really, when you're looking at your part, one of the first things that you want to do is to uh, locate your part or move your part to where you want um, zero to be. Uh, there's a couple of a couple of steps that we can go through. The first thing that I really want to do is create a new layer, uh, change the color that I'm drawing with, and then I want to extract some wireframe from this uh, top shape here. Okay, so now I have my wireframe. Uh, from there, I'm going to select everything, and then I'm going to do an entity summary, and this will give me a bounding box. And that bounding box, I'm just going to write down this information, and I'm going to use these to plot some points so that uh, I know what the area of the part is so I can start uh, so I can draw a box around it basically all right so from here I'm just gonna go to point coordinates and I'm gonna type in these positions this one's minus 1.0710 all right so that gives me one point and then I'll do the other one and then its location alright so now I have these uh, these points on the screen I can do line continuous sketch vertical so I'll do one there I'm gonna do one here and then I'll do sketch horizontal I'll do one here and then we'll do one here alright so now I have my bounding box I can come in and just kind of trim this shape up. Okay, so what I want to do is look at where my uh, my zero position is. I mean, I may want to measure this. I, I mean, you know, if you want to throw some dimensions down on the screen, you can do dimension vertical, and this won't tell you what this dimension is here and then you could do dimension horizontal and you can grab these dimensions here so at least you have an idea of the scale or uh, the stock size that you're gonna start with you know you could uh, create some parallel lines or what have you to get your zero in this case and I don't know where where the client wants the zero as part but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this geometry and I'm gonna zero in this back corner so I'm gonna do utilities translate sketch enter I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna pick this position here and that actually is my zero is in this back corner okay now the next thing that I want to do you know is uh, I want to add another layer here and I'm gonna move these two whole locations I'm gonna move them over to their own layer and then I'll add another layer I'm gonna select the profile of the part and I'm gonna move that over to its own layer so we basically have our stock and then we have the outside of the part and then we have our uh, circles here alright so now when we get into the the cam tree we can select our wireframe boundary here as a stock shape now I kinda did that kinda quickly so let me undo that 
right click reselect I need to chain select so shift left click I get it highlighted right click OK and uh, what that does is give me my stock geometry the only purpose of that stock geometry is to be used uh, in simulation alright so now uh, I have my stock set up I want to load in a three axis routine so we're gonna do a three axis rough we're gonna select our home model so we'll say select all and then the boundary we're gonna use is this uh, this these holes here that I created so we're gonna use this one and this one spacebar so now we've locked in our boundary and then we just want to go to where it says Z level rough right click edit uh, from here we're gonna go to our tool size um, you know let's say half inch end mill these are your your speeds and feeds you can manually type in what you want or the system will calculate it all right approach and entry we're gonna uh, plunge this is our depth of cut this is our step over amount this is how much stock we're gonna leave for finish uh, we're gonna do a pocket out climb mill uh, we're gonna do by area and eh, we'll throw an arc fit on there sure and then we'll choose OK and then we'll uh, come over here to where it says the little rough right click and compute all right so this is saying that the top of job it's saying that the um, the model is above the top of job I really didn't check that if I do this again it will give me this value so it's a hundred thousand so what I'm gonna do is translate the model down this is minus point one uh, oops let me do that again Delta move it down okay there we go so now I'll reselect the geometry and then I'll recompute and then what this is gonna do is the the pocket routine to to just kind of rough this shape out here um, it really looks more like a z-level finish right now so that kinda tells me a little bit about my tool size uh, I'm not sure what material this is I'm just gonna drop down my tool size and step over oops And get a little bit more but you can see it really uh, there's not much for the tool to come in and clean that up so you know depending on how hard the material or what is you uh, you may change your depth of cut or the tool that you're using but what this will do is this is gonna rough we will use the Z level rough to rough the part out uh, we want to just blank our tool path now uh, we can come back and do a Z level finish and what this is going to do is uh, cut the vertical wall so we'll go to our tool and we'll just set up a ball mill we set up a ball mill by defining the corner radius and it's going to go through here and we're going to say innermost only we may not need to use a boundary here we'll say arc fit okay we'll go ahead and compute this so this is going to clean up the vertical walls the last thing that we're going to need to do here unless the depth of these coned pockets uh, is an increment of our z level rough but we left stock for finish anyways is we'll come back in and do a uh, a pocket routine to clean those up so let me uh, I'm gonna blank this one out here I'm gonna go back to my layers I'm gonna add another layer utilities extract edges single we'll pick this one and this one okay so I need to figure out what the depth is of those pockets so I'm gonna do a measure so I can right click uh, measure entity and pick this up and that will get displayed over here so I know how deep I'm going and then now I'm just gonna load a pocket routine I'll go ahead and select uh, these two home locations I'm gonna edit my parameters so this is gonna be uh, 
I'm gonna do pocket out. Total depth, this is 0. 0.7250. Should use a lead in and out on the finish pass, but that's okay. All right, so now we have our pocket routine. And let's just blank this. So that what that will do is come in and clean up the bottom uh, of the shape. And that's uh, basically the workflow that you have to machine this uh, part. Uh, Z-level rough. Let me blank this one here. So we have uh, a Z-level rough to rough the material out. We have a Z-level finish to clean clean up the vertical walls. And then we have a pocket routine to finish the floor on the bottom. Uh, if there's any questions or comments or feedback that you have, please reply back to the thread that this video will be posted in, the Facebook or the YouTube. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.